Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm very excited to have with me Preston Hadley, who is the president at Envision Automation and Control. So welcome, Preston. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, man, I'm so excited to talk with you, buddy. I see a lot of, about Envision and stuff that you're doing on LinkedIn, and we had to, to connect and talk. So, you know, tell our listeners, where, where is Envision at? Where are you guys located? Yeah, so we're located in Chandler, Indiana, which is kind of in the tri-state area of Indiana, Kentucky, and Illinois, right on the Ohio River. Okay, very cool, man. Very cool. I, I loved a lot of the stuff that you're doing, and um, I know we're going to dig into a lot of that today when we're on this episode, but maybe just get us started, Preston. Tell us a little bit about your journey through your career, man. Yeah, so I actually started um, kind of in a different way. I started in IT way back in the day uh, in the family business, which was a manufacturing company. And I uh, self-taught myself in IT and took a couple of Dreamweaver courses and Photoshop courses and stuff like that, uh, which was part of like a web development uh, kind of development cycle for myself that I went through and just taught myself all that. I developed the websites for the company um, and other, other customers at the time. I went and worked for an IT company for a few uh, years um, on and off. And eventually I was introduced uh, while on a, out on my own outside of the family business, I was introduced uh, by my father to a gentleman that ultimately became my mentor in automation and controls and um, uh, kind of led me down this pretty amazing path. And so here we are today. I started Envision Automation Controls in January of 2019. So it's been about two years, a little over two years now, and uh, everything's going very well. That's great. Now, so Envision, so you're a, a system integrator? Yes, sir. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Just want to make sure our listeners know exactly the, the line of work that you're in, man. So that's mm -hmm. so, so exciting. And, and now I'm starting to get why some of your content is so awesome. It's because you have that background with that, that you mentioned your website and a lot of your social stuff looks just killer, man. Great job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I've spent a lot of time perfecting graphic design uh, for the family business back in the day. And, um, you know, that comes in handy today for sure, man. I don't have to pay a marketing firm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we were talking to, to, to prep for this conversation, Preston, one thing that came up, man, and I see it in a lot of, in a lot of your social media is about the, the skills gap in industry. And, and you, you got a passion there. I mean, I love some of the stuff you're doing, you know, why do you see that skills gap as such a big challenge for industry right now, man? I think it's going to be typically hard to pass down knowledge in any industry, but I think it is most notably a challenge um, because I don't feel like there's enough uh, people making a connection between the older generations and the new, newer generations coming in. Um, I feel like by the time most of the guys are retired, um, that's when the new guys are starting to come in. Uh, and I think that's happening because there's also a shortage. Um, so I feel like a lot of these younger guys are coming in, they're feeling alone and they're kind of having to do it the old fashioned way and just kind of beat their head against the wall to learn things and, and get into the groove of things. So, and that's, that's fine. A lot of people have to learn that way uh, and will learn that way. But I do think there's a big skills gap. We're not getting people that are less formally educated uh, into it as well, which I think is a good path. Uh, there are many people on LinkedIn that are uh, the top of their expertise and have not went through the traditional, more formal education process. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know, I, I noticed one thing when we were talking and, and seeing this, the stuff that you're doing online, you did this thing called the change of life giveaway. And I, to me, that addresses this problem directly. And it's actually one of the most direct ways I've ever seen someone address the problem of, of the skill, the skill force gap. So can you talk, tell, tell us about that? How'd you come up with that idea and what did that look like? And, and any, any details around the change of life giveaway? Yeah, well, it kind of came about because of uh, the mentorship that I received okay. was so influential and such a big deal uh, for me. It actually did change my life. Um, and so I wanted to be able to, to give that kind of experience to somebody else with, you know, without having to actually become a mentor to each and every person that uh, came to me for advice or knowledge, which happens quite a bit on LinkedIn. And 
mm-hmm. and, and it's flattering. I uh, wish I knew everything, but I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I try to help where I can. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, it came out of wanting just to, to kind of take what the men, the mentor that I had gave me the value that he gave me and see if I couldn't just push it back out into the world for somebody else, uh, whether, you know, in, in a different way. Right. And, uh, so I figured the best way to do that would be able to, or sorry, would be to get the technology into somebody's hands. Um, Because I know a lot of people are visual and they're hands-on learners and, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily um, the best when it comes to traditional learning through a classroom environment or a webinar or whatever. Right. Uh, So I figured the best way to get somebody, you know, a leg up or a head start would be to give them a physical PLC to get their hands on. That's pretty cool. So is that what that is? I mean, what's what's the the winner of that challenge or that that uh, opportunity? What do they get? Is it a PLC and some other control? Yeah. So the first one we did was for the first quarter of the year. The winner was Jason Rice, and what he won was a Siemens S seven twelve hundred starter kit, mm-hmm. which included the S seven twelve hundred PLC and HMI, uh, and a few little inputs and outputs to get him going. Uh, it also included. Uh, uh, a version, I think it was version 15 license of step seven uh, software so he could program it. And also he received uh, a license um, for factory IO, which is a virtual kind of manufacturing environment, which you can integrate with your physical PLC on your desk um, to give you a real world kind of like testing. Uh, touch and feel of it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's super cool, man. So, I mean, did you, so did Envision, y'all funded that yourselves? Yeah. So the first one we completely sponsored and funded uh, in-house. Uh, there are more giveaways in store. They will be each quarter throughout the rest of this year. Uh, we are uh, darn near done planning the second one, uh, which will be launching in June. Uh, the third one is in tow as well. Uh, and I think that one will probably include more Siemens product. Uh, and, and I think some of these going forward, I will be working with either distributors or the manufacturers directly to kind of help bring that, some of that value, yeah. uh, to whoever wins. Man, I, I don't know, you know, we, we talk to a lot of people and, and there's definitely a lot of, of wonderful integrators out there, but you're one of the first I've seen doing a, a program like this, you know, where it's impacting one-on-one people directly, man, hats off to you. I mean, did, what feedback did you get from the winner? Did it, did it, has it impacted them? Any, any stories there? Yeah, it's a wonderful story. It blew me away actually. So he won, uh, he was ecstatic, of course, free PLC. I mean, that's pretty cool. Right. Uh, but he happened to be in school. Uh, to be a controls engineer or electrical engineer, one of the two. Uh, So he was going down that path uh, in a formal, traditional kind of way. And uh, he was working a part-time job and he has a a pretty good sized family. Well, it was probably one or two weeks after he won. um, And I posted the fact that he had won. That kind of found its way through my network to a recruiter, uh, a really awesome recruiter, and uh, he hooked him up with a, a job in that field. So within, uh, it was like a four week span of him winning, he actually landed a full time job in the field in which he was looking for. Oh man, that's a touchdown right there, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So it was it was an indirect uh, result of the giveaway, but nonetheless, uh, he did send me a great words about how it really did change his life. Just kind of, you know one thing through the other and kind of indirectly it changed his life man that's wonderful that is absolutely wonderful congratulations to him and man Mm -hmm. thank you for you for for being intentional about a program like this and having the the vision to 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 want to put something out there like this man that's great that is so great thank you i appreciate it yeah i know when we were we were digging earlier too we were talking about you know you have control engineers and you have control technicians and we haven't really talked about on Eco Ask Why the difference between the two. So, man, what do you see as the difference there? Well, uh, when I think of a traditional controls engineer, I'm thinking of someone who can engineer solutions from scratch on blank sheet projects, mm-hmm. uh, meaning electrical engineering, programming PLC programs for OEM equipment, uh, and integrating that equipment uh, with other equipment from scratch. I think controls uh, technicians would better fall under like a service category guys who can go out and troubleshoot uh, equipment that's been deployed and has been running uh, or make small modifications to the PLC programs and HMIs uh, commissioning equipment 
and of course, swapping out components and troubleshooting wiring and things like that, working with maintenance personnel and electrical contractors to get the job done. That's why I think a controls technician is in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. You know, and you see a lot of stuff out there, particularly on recruiters and LinkedIn and things like that about the cr control engineer himself, but the control technician piece, you know, I, I don't see that much. So, I mean, what do you think? How should we be talking or promoting these control technician type of opportunities to get that next generation excited about that opportunity as well? Yeah, you know, I think it's a great path for guys who are in the electrical contracting industries. Uh, I think it's a great path for people who are in maintenance. And I think uh, to get them excited, honestly, to go into it, guys, you're going to get as close to automation and a controls engineer as you can without that uh, degree, you know, and, and it's a great path into it. I think that what would make me most excited if I could get the title of controls technician um, coming from electrical or a maintenance background would be that puts me one step closer to my ultimate goal is to be a controls engineer. And, you know, if I can go to a, a systems integrator or an OEM or just a, a manufacturing plant and show them that I've, or I either have the electrical <clears throat> or the maintenance background coupled with, I've worked with drives and PLCs and HMIs and all these other components. Mm -hmm. And I understand how the whole system works. And I can come to the next step with a, you know, a smaller company who's not necessarily looking for that degree, uh, but may use you in a controls engineer type uh, position. Right. So I think it just puts you one step closer. For sure. For sure. I mean, because I mean, not everybody's ready right out of high school to go for that engineering degree. Right. I mean, there's, there could be right. stepping stones. Everybody's path is a different path. Correct. And, and some of the more influential and higher caliber men and women on LinkedIn that you'll see in our industry, a good portion of them are not formally educated um, and, and just perform out of this world. It's really quite incredible. It is. It really is, man. So, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe speak to the, you know, I know you're all about the workforce gap there and things we're trying to close up. What advice would you have if somebody wants to pursue a career like yourself? You know, what, what are you going to tell them? I would say, guys, get started now. You know, there are so many resources uh, that you can work with from home. Uh, there's plcdojo.com, Solace PLC. Um, there are just a ton of, uh, of course, there's, uh, you know, the automationblog.com. There are an incredible plethora of resources for you to get started. So my advice would be sign up to one of these uh, courses, start watching the YouTube videos, uh, follow them on LinkedIn, follow them on their uh, subsequent social media websites, and just soak up as, as much of the knowledge as you can now. And, you know, bring that knowledge uh, before your employers. You know, if, if you're in a maintenance position or you're an electrician or something, and you have the ability to move up into controls and engineering, mm -hmm. uh, you know, prove that out at home, learn it, tinker, and just kind of be curious, right? right? And I think if you can bring that kind of knowledge that you've gained and put it into some kind of form, whether it be a PLC program, an HMI program, or some physical hardware and some wiring, if you can bring that before your, your employer or new potential employers, you may actually have a really good shot at landing a position. And the reason I say that is because I do feel like the, the um, requirements for these degrees are actually starting to drop a quite a bit, I think because of the shortage. Right. And I think a lot of employers are like, Hey, we want to know that, you know, your stuff, mm -hmm. but we also need people and we need help. And so at some point they kind of start to dial back those requirements a little bit on the formal side. And they really just want to know, do you know your stuff right. or can you learn your stuff? Right. Now, a couple of those resources you mentioned, I wrote, I was writing quickly. So PLC dojo, what was the second one you said that you really wanted people to go to? Yeah, it's Solace PLC. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Vladimir Romanov, if you know him on LinkedIn. Yep, yep. Uh, and I believe Sean Tierney, uh, the automation blog. Okay. And there's also Tim Wellborn with uh, TW oh, yeah. Controls. Yeah, Yeah, he's a good friend of, of us here at EcoSY. We love TW and what Tim's doing. Uh, he's yes. actually been featured on the show and – Tell you what, for our listeners, we'll put links to everything here that, that Preston just went through so that you can go directly to it because I think there's great opportunity. We haven't heard of a couple of these, Preston, so 
I definitely want to go through, back through that one more time. So I appreciate you uh, walking us through that, man. It's a big part of it. You know, I, when I first got rolling, uh, one of the first courses I took was PLC. Uh, well, it wasn't PLC dojo, but it was Paul Lynn. He had his courses on Udemy and okay. uh, I took a course there, uh, two or three courses. And that's really what helped me quite a bit on my, on my own time outside of my mentorship. That's cool, man. I mean, I know you're talking to a lot of people coming to the industry. You said you're getting hit a lot. Do you have any standard questions or people's perception about the industry that you'd like to take a chance to clarify right now? Hey, man, people think this is what we do, but here's more. This is reality. I'd love to hear what you your thoughts there. Yeah. I, so I think a big common misconception in the industry is I think a lot of people feel overwhelmed and they feel like there's this giant block of knowledge you have to consume within a, a short span of time. And it's anything further from the truth, you know, as anything else, you can't consume everything overnight uh, and your brain can't consume everything overnight. So I think a big misconception, something people should think about is it takes time to learn things and it's, it's kind of an incremental process. And at what speed you earn that knowledge incrementally is completely dependent upon you. If you want to go home at night and tinker on your, you know, your Micrologix 1500 that you purchased on eBay, because you're just so passionate about it, you said, I'm going to shell out a couple hundred bucks and buy this and get the software and, and I'm going to make this happen. Right. You're obviously you're going to move a little quicker than the, the next guy, but you know, nonetheless, I think that's a big misconception. Everything is, is, uh, you know, it might be, it might be a big block of whatever, but just take bites out of it and you'll eventually whittle away at it. No doubt, man. No doubt. I mean, yeah. do, you, do you think it's important for people who have that passion to try to find and align a mentor? I know you've mentioned a mentor a couple of times, you know, it's one thing to have that PLC at home working on it at night, but you get stuck. Sometimes you need somewhere to go and, and you know, to get past that, that, that point that you're at. What are your advice there around mentors that maybe have helped you in your career? Yeah. So my advice would be if you're stuck, get on LinkedIn. That'd be my first and foremost piece of advice. Right. Secondly, you may find a mentor on LinkedIn. That's probably the best place. Uh, you know, I, I know social media is a powerful tool. There's Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that. But I find that our particular community is extremely in, uh, interactive and involved on LinkedIn and not really the other platforms. I know there's some large automation groups on Facebook. Join those, go in there and talk to people. And you may find someone who's uh, kind of sees potential in you and wants to hand down their knowledge because really a mentor kind of has to uh, uh, see a spark in you to want to take on that, that initiative, right? you know, and, uh, and I was very lucky to have that. Um, and I wasn't actually, when I got a mentor, I wasn't even doing anything in controls. I was just an IT guy doing nerdy stuff. And, uh, he just, he's seen that I knew both IT and a little bit of the mechanical stuff and, you know, and he just kind of rolled with it. Well, I think definitely go on LinkedIn and seek out knowledgeable people and don't be afraid to ask actually, like if I had someone inbox me and I had more spare time and they said, Hey, I love your content. I think you're great, whatever. Uh, but I, I really want to learn from you and I want you to be my mentor. I, I don't be afraid to ask that. There's right. probably a lot of guys out there that would love to pass down their knowledge, uh, to the younger generations. It's a, it's a very rewarding process as a mentor, I think. Yeah. Now, I mean, you, you've mentioned a few times you've had those mentors. I mean, anybody you want to, to give recognition to specifically? Uh, I, I, not necessarily, he's a very private person, but, uh, I would say other than him, my father was a great mentor in manufacturing, uh, in small business. And, uh, of course, uh, a few of my family members have been great mentors that are also business owners. So a lot of these uh, family members, they've been very influential. And, uh, of course, uh, just having the support of my family and friends along the way yeah. has been very, very influential. That's awesome, man. That's great. That's, it's so important to have that, that good core people around you. So Yes, absolutely. You know, I've noticed some stuff you've been posting and, and, and putting out there it has to do about machine retrofitting now and, and how you're seeing that change for system integrators. You know, so what, what are you seeing there? What's the biggest change that's coming? Well, I, I noticed that uh, uh, companies are wanting to retrofit equipment, but not necessarily just retrofit them to 
you know, updated controls. They also want to connect those machines. Mm -hmm. They want to get data from those machines and they want to be able to utilize that data. I, I think that whether uh, uh, manufacturers know it or not, uh, kind of in a direct way, they feel the pressure uh, in the industry to move towards 4.0. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is kind of a buzzword. Let's, let's be honest about that. But uh, there is a significant push for it. And it's felt by everybody. I met with a customer recently that they want uh, all of their older equipment to be connected, monitored, and, and grab data from that so they can see uptime, downtime, and all of that stuff, and production data, and et cetera. And, um, you know, it's uh, they don't exactly know how to get it done. Right. You know, they just know that they need to move that way if they're going to stay with the times and move forward as a modern manufacturing company. So uh, I think that's a big core element to retrofitting is not just updating it from, you know, an old PLC five to a, a compact logics or control logics platform in Allen Bradley, or um, it's also making that machine intelligent enough so that we can grab data from it mm -hmm. and give that data in a useful way to our customers. Right. That's outstanding, man. I mean, that's definitely where a lot of this stuff is going for sure. And sounds like mm -hmm. you're on, uh, on the cutting edge and on the front lines rather of uh, making that happen for a lot of industries out there. Yeah. Well, you know, before I um, started working in, in automation, I actually did a lot of C++ programming on microcontrollers oh. and embedded projects uh, just a handful of years ago where we were using a lot of the same technologies like MQTT and Mosquito. Uh, we're using uh, Node-RED and the Influx uh, tick stack and stuff like that to deliver um, IoT data uh, to the cloud for monitoring, you know, different things like fuel tanks and water levels and pest control traps and you name it. So yeah. a lot of that comes very familiar. And I see a lot of technicians and engineers um, kind of playing and toying and integrating that stuff into their actual machines and, and products and pump skids and et cetera. And it's really exciting because it's, it's super cool technology. It's really not all that complicated, but it's super useful for the customer at yeah. the end of the day. No doubt, man. No doubt. That, that sounds sounds awesome. Sounds like you're having a lot of fun. I am curious, man. When are you the happiest? Like, what what work are you doing that gives you the most fulfillment, man? I'm the happiest whenever I can pass down knowledge. You know, when I get somebody, uh, it could be an operator at a plant, and they say, "Man, what do you, you know, what do you do? What is that that you're doing?" You know, yeah. and I've had people say, "Well, that's magic." You know, what is that? And I'm, I'm like, guys, it's not that complicated. And I just kind of love explaining things. I love passing down knowledge to uh, newcomers in the industry. And of course, I'm really happy when I get to solve uh, my customers' problems. But hey, that's, that's why I have to say that anyway, right? right you know, right. but I, it's true. I really am happy to solve their problems. That's awesome, man. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's take a, a, a turn outside of Envision for a minute and talk, talk about things outside of work. How about that? Absolutely. Man, so what, what do you enjoy doing for fun, man? As of late, I've been uh, working on my new boat. Uh, okay. Well, new new to me, it's a 1985 Baja. I really enjoy tinkering on the uh, outboard motor. It's a 200 horse. I love kind of getting this thing ready for the for the summer. Nice man, nice. Okay, yes. so you'll be hitting the hitting the lakes up there in Indiana. Yeah, we've got Patoka Lake, Kentucky Lake. We'll definitely be on the river since we're right here. Okay. Uh, and a, a good couple of friends of mine, they have private ramps on right down the river off the back of their house. We get to go down in the river and play. Um, so that's, that's one more recent kind of, um, outside of work passion slash hobby that I've really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Now you, uh, when you get on the water, what, are you skiing? Are you fishing? What, what are you doing out there on the water, man? Well, this summer we plan on doing some tubing and, okay. and that's about it. And, and of course, getting in the water and swimming and stuff, because we have a six year old and she uh, she's never tubed or anything like that. Okay. So we want to take it nice and slow and just take it easy. I hear you, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, man, sh share with us about your family. We love hearing about families here on the show. So what would you like yeah. to t tell us about? Yeah. So uh, my girlfriend, Jessica, she's a sweetheart. She actually. Uh, is a photographer for um, a studio. They take photographs for uh, for schools. Okay. So she's doing all the photographs for your for your kids in their yearbook. Uh, all the I think elementary, middle school, and even high school. Yeah. Uh, so she gets a lot of satisfaction out of that because she loves children. And uh, uh, our our daughter Lily, she's six years old, uh, and she's just a smart little whip, is what she is. Um, 
In fact, I was showing her some new knots on tying up the fenders and the anchor and the dock lines on the boat yesterday, and she got them the first time out without having to, to try more than once. So she's a smart little thing, uh, and, and that, that's the entirety of our family, but we have a good little family. That's sure. awesome, man. That's so great. Congratulations. I yeah. uh, hope you guys have a wonderful summer out there on the water and get get Lily lots of time out there. By the end of summer, man, she'll be a professional tuber, I'm sure. That's, you know she will. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> Very good, man. Very good. Well, how about this, Press? We love doing a, what, we're called, what we call the lightning round in these hero episodes, but, and I like doing it. Because it just gives our listeners a chance to get to know you even better. You know, I mean, we, we talk sure. so much about work, but just getting outside of work, just it's just fun to know a little bit about, you know, you as a person. So if you're willing to play, man, let's jump in and do it. All righty, let's go. <clears throat> All right, buddy. Well, I always start off easy, easy stuff. So how about your favorite food? Favorite food has to be chicken. That's all I can eat. All you can eat. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I have alpha gal, so I can't eat mammalian meats. I got you, man. I got you. Was that like yeah. a, from a tick bike or something? Yes, sir. I got you. How about adult beverage? I don't drink adult beverages. No adult beverages? And what about regular beverages? Water, Fanta, <laughs> <laughs> Fanta soda. I love that stuff. Nice, man. Fanta soda. Yeah. I, I hear you're the first Fanta soda uh, favorite <laughs> beverage we've had, man. So that, that got, you you, bro you broke that, buddy. That's awesome. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> How about uh, favorite movie, man? Oh, gosh. I don't know if I could pick one. I, I love comedy. You know, I'll say a good one. Blue Streak with uh, Martin Lawrence in it. That's a pretty funny movie. Okay. Or National Security, I think Martin Lawrence is in as well. It's pretty funny. So I'm picking up a Martin Lawrence theme. So is he your favorite actor? Uh, when I was a younger kid, he was. He's hilarious, man. Isn't he? He was, <laughs> he was good, man. I mean, just, yeah, just he, Martin, the show was awesome. Yeah, when he was in that Blue Streak movie, he kind of put on that pizza guy delivery outfit and did that weird dance in the police station to get the badge. It just, right. that cracks me up every time, man. <laughs> now how about music, man? What, what do you enjoy listening to? Well, I used to play uh, drums a long time ago and I played a lot of rock, but I think my favorite music these days, um, is a mix between country and rock, kind of like country rock pop almost oh, a little okay. bit. So yeah. But if you if you see my Spotify playlist, there's like a thousand songs, and they're all kinds of different genres. But I'll say country rock is my favorite. Country right rock's now. your favorite. So if you had to narrow it down to like an all time favorite country and all time favorite rock band, I mean, wh who would it be, man? I'm gonna try to put a spot, put you on the spotlight here. Sure, yeah. Uh, for country, it's going to be uh, Hank Williams Jr. And for rock, it's probably gonna be Shine Down. Okay. A great band. Yeah, okay. Great music. That's awesome, man. Awesome. So we're getting, we're getting to know you, man. We're peeling back the layers <laughs> of that onion. That's awesome. How, how about somewhere you, you, you haven't been before that you like to like to go someday, man? Oh, man, Texas. I've never been there. Okay. Any, I've never been in there. Just want to go just to see what it's like? Yeah, you know, I, I just want to see what it's all hype about the 10-gallon hats and everything's big, you know? I, no, no, for real, though, I, I, I just, I've been down south, you know, we're kind of, considered middle of the road southern i just think uh everything about texas kind of interests me you know yeah. their culture yeah and just the way that everything is down there so i want to check it out a lot of the youtube channel stars i follow they live in texas so they have kind of an interesting lifestyle okay um but uh, yeah i definitely love to go down there that's cool man that's cool now you mentioned some of your youtube channels so, i mean what are some of your favorite youtube that you watch in there yeah, I, I man, I can't help myself. So there's a YouTube channel called Demolition Ranch, uh, and uh, off the ranch, it's uh, Matt. I forgot his last name, but the guy's crazy. I mean, I've been watching him for years. So on Demolition Ranch, he just you know blows stuff up with <laughs> guns and everything else. And then on off the ranch, they've been restoring an abandoned mansion for like a year or two now. And oh wow! So yeah, it's just a a lot of really interesting things are being done on that channel and down in Texas. Also, there's a huge wave of all these um, uh, entertainment stars from Los Angeles to Texas. Okay. You know, over the last year, you know, Joe Rogan moved to Texas, Elon Musk. Um, I think uh, Ben Shapiro moved from LA to Tennessee, Nashville, Candace yeah. Owens, you know, they all kind of like moved over there and they're, they're just a bunch of great uh, people to watch, man. Yeah. People to watch. Yeah. Very cool, man. Very cool. And how about still in a lightning round, a vacation spot that you've been to that uh, you, you really recommend to others? Panama City Beach. 
hands down. Nice. Yeah, if you if you can get a condo right on the water, thankfully one of my buddies has one and and we got to stay there. But uh, if you can get right on the water, there is not a more beautiful place probably other than just north of uh, Los Angeles. If you go north about an hour, okay. Uh, I think there's a there's a theme park right up there. The 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 kind of mountain range area around that's really beautiful as well. But I would definitely recommend Panama City Beach. Okay, cool. Yeah. Ford or Chevy? Chevy. All right. Just curious how to throw it. I just want to see where you sit on that. And then last thing, pets, man. Dogs. <clears throat> that's the only that is the only right answer, and you got it right, brother. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, we'll, we'll see. I'm sure that that will come back on me one day where I'll have a cat. Some cat person will come back to me, but that's just the way it is, man. There is really only one right answer there. So <laughs> that's correct, man. Man's best friend right there. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Now, this is this was fun, Preston. I really got to know you. Uh, you know, just thank you. What you're doing in Vision is wonderful. We call it Eco Ask Why. We we always wrap up with the why, and that just speaks about your passion, man. So, you know, if somebody was coming to say to Preston, you know, what is your personal why? What would that be? My personal why is solving problems that most uh, people seem to find impossible. We're solving problems that are just a huge pain in somebody's rear on a day to day. And to see that satisfaction on their face and their tone and the way that they speak after it's been fixed. That's my why. That's awesome, man. Well, you're doing a great job. I mean, I highly encourage our listeners We'll make sure in our show notes that you have ways to connect with Preston, follow and vision to, to see the things that he's creating out there. Uh, again, it's just so many wonderful things that you're doing, Preston, and we're very supportive and, and proud of you and happy for you. Wish you nothing but the best out there in Indiana and all over because I know you're all over the place. And uh, just thank you again, man, for taking the time with us on Eco Ask Why today. Well, thanks. I appreciate it, Chris. Absolutely. Well, you have a wonderful day, sir. You as well. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. -S 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 -S